Trip number one, automating creation of basic aggregation measures, meaning sum, average, mean, max, count, distinct count. So what I have here is tabular editor. I already switched to C Sharp script uh, tab and I have my script here already. What the script will do is for selected columns, uh, it will create number of measures. I will find some column which we can use as an example and we can create those series of measures. So let's see on the left. There are not that many to choose from, so I will use H, however, you can use anything else as an example. Once I press run, let's see what it did. It's created a subfolder called basic measures. Okay, and under that subfolder, there are five more, six more. Average, count, count distinct, max, mean, sum. And under those, we have two measures in each subfolder. Sum of H, sum of employee ID. And if you look into the expression for those measures, you have regular DAX measure, which is created automatically in just a mere seconds. Now let's see how the script works. So what I do first is I'm getting all of the selected columns. Okay, here and storing it in the variable called C. And then I'm iterating through them, okay. This is what gets iterated, okay. I'm creating new measure. I'm calling add measure uh, method, okay. And within this method, uh, I'm specifying first name, which will be sum of, because this, uh, this part is for some measures, and name of the column, okay, which is taken automatically. Then I have to specify DAX expression, which is sum plus object full name, which means column and table reference. Then I have to specify display folder, which is basic measures, as you can see. And for subfolders, you have to use uh, double slash and sum. Then what it does next is it specifies formatting string with two decimal points. You measure format string and description. This measure is the sum of column and full name. Table reference, column reference. And after that, it hides a regional column. C refers to, uh, apologies, to selected column. So it hides original uh, columns so that people use the measure itself. And it's repeated for all other types of measures that are here. The code is the same for max, mean, count, distinct count, etc. Crypt number two. Let's find some date column and see which format is set for that date column. Let's see, higher date. Okay, what do we see here? Higher date is their format. Okay, as you can see here, this is what currently is set, that column. However, with this script, which I have here, which I just pasted, all of the date fields will be changed to short date. You can also specify some other format string, but in this example, we're using short date. So let me press run, and we see that date format has already changed to short date automatically. And that happened for all of them. You can also find other strings here, which you can specify in format string. So if you want to customize it. Now let's see how the script works. So again, I'm iterating th through all of the tables in my model, okay? And I'm storing each table in variable table. And then there is another iterator 
within the first one, which goes through all of the columns within those tables. Okay, and then if uh, that column has the time data type, and only then, we see comparison here, it changes format string to short date. As I mentioned, you can specify other format strings here. Script number three. I actually don't see people creating hierarchies often for some reason. However, I made script for that. What you need to do is to select a few columns and the script will follow order of your selection. So choose it wisely in a way that you want it in hierarchy. Once you selected uh, columns, you can press run and you will see new hierarchy created here. And it follows the order of your selection. In the script, you have to specify first hierarchy name. You can rename it after, you can rename it here, up to you. After that, what we have is here we're getting all of the columns that are currently selected by the, by the user, or me in this case. Now, there are also a few uh, error checks. So if you don't have any columns selected, you will have error message pop up. Or if you have columns selected in different tables, which is not possible, Power BI does not support hierarchies <clears throat> for multiple tables, you will get error message as well. This is what happens here. And uh, yeah, then I'm creating hierarchy here. First with the name, without columns. And in the next step, I'm iterating and adding new levels into that hierarchy here. And once, once that is done, I'm also hiding original columns which were used for hierarchy so that users use hierarchy instead of original columns. This is what happens here. Script number four. This is a favorite of mine. I like to organize stuff. So what this script does is sorts out columns, measures, and calculated columns into relevant subfolders. Let's see how it works. Okay, I ran it. And as you can see on the left, we have three subfolders. Calculated columns. Okay, let's see. There are five calculated columns. Regular columns, sorted here. And measures, all of the measures. And we have that under each in every uh, table. Okay, let's see how the script works. So first, I'm starting to iterate. What I am iterating is through tables in my model, all of the tables in my model. First, I'm getting all of the calculated columns and making a list of those. Then I'm iterating through all of the columns in the table. And I'm checking if uh, my column is in the list of calculated columns, then it goes under calculated column subfolder in uh, or display folder as Power BI calls it. Otherwise, it means it's a regular column. Okay. And therefore, we assign uh, underlying columns display folder. So this is the first script that runs. And then there is another one here, which goes or iterates through all of the measures in my model, as you can see here, and places them in measure subfolder. It's that easy. Script number five. And this is the simple one. Basically, what it does is when you have columns which are connected to other tables, which, which are foreign keys, it will hide them because usually that happens when you connect column to dimension. In this case, users should use column from the dimension itself, not from the original table. And for that, 
it's always better to hide those uh, columns in the fact table so that users, while looking for it, find it and use it from dimension table. The script scans all of the relationships and hides those columns. Let's see. Let's run it. Oh, and actually, I didn't check which ones. Let's see. We have here a separation reason. Term reason connected to separation type. Which means term reason should be hidden once we're on the script in employee table. Okay, let's check that it works this way. Let me switch back to tabular editor. Let me find uh, this column. Let me unhide it because it's hidden already. And let's run the script. Once we're on the script, it should be hidden. And it did. As you can see here, it got updated because it's on the side of uh, one to many, many relationships, because it's in the fact table. And therefore, the column, which is in the dimension table, will be visible. And that's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one.